Okay, this is yet another series of videos that I'm making for my website, uh, pfsensesetup.com. And these are instructional videos in which I demonstrate how to do some basic things with uh, pfsense. And in this video, we're going to cover um, the uh, assignment and configuration of virtual LANs or VLANs. Um, and first, some basic information about VLANs. Um, before uh, the VLAN standards have been developed, um, pretty much the only way that you could add additional networks to your um, was to add another switch. So you know you were limited by by your hardware. Um, you know, um, but with the development of the IEEE uh, 802.1Q standard, which um, defi defines the specifications for uh, VLANs, you can have several networks, two or more networks on a, a single uh, switch or port. Um, and the way that this is achieved is by tagging. Uh, e each VLAN packet has a an 802.1.q packet which is just a number uh, from 1 to 4094 which identifies the network the you know the VLAN network that that uh, the packet is is assigned to um, so um, and you can do the you can go the other way too. You can have multiple networks on a single switch, or you can have a network segment that spans more than one switch. You know, typically, you, it's you know the the former, not the latter. You usually have um, multiple networks on a single switch, um, and that's what, what we're going to be demonstrating in this video. But you know, just FYI, there there are there is another way of doing it. Um, and just to go over the requirements, um, the most obvious requirement is that you you have to have network cards that support VLAN tagging. And you don't have to worry too much about this because uh, most network hardware that has been manufactured since uh, the about 2000. Which you know is about the last 15 years as of this recording um, supports VLAN tagging. Now that having been said, some network cards do it better than others, and um, one of the reasons why the PFSense project uh, recommends Intel network cards is not because they're paid by Intel, although I don't know maybe they are, but but no, seriously, uh, you know, in, Intel cards just generally seem to work well, especially with the, uh, you know, things things like VLAN tagging or other, you know, slightly esoteric things that that might uh, be problematic on on other network cards like the uh, the Realtek cards, um, and just uh, you know, for, for your information, again, the this. My PFSense box has all Intel Pro 100 cards in it. And if you're um, in the process of putting together your own PFSense system, you might consider using Intel uh, cards. And, and in fact, you, you might just go ahead and, and throw Intel Pro 1000s in, in there because I, they can be obtained fairly cheaply. I, I, I think you might be able to get them for, for under ten dollars on, on eBay by now for all I know um, but but you know the, the the gigabit cards are are fairly cheap now um, and the other thing that should be mentioned is that the parent interface should not be an interface on pfSense and this is not a strict requirement but um, if the parent interface is, is assigned to a network, um, it tends to make some things not work as well, like uh, captive portal, for example. Also, security could be an issue because 
the default VLAN one on a network. Um, the firewall rules are allow any rather than the the default deny any of, of other networks. So generally, the best way of doing it is to have a, a a parent interface that has no um, networks assigned to it, so, which is the way that we're going to de demonstrate it in this video. And so to begin, we're just going to log into our PFSense box. And I just click on the login button, and that'll take us to the dashboard. And as you can see, we're running 2.2.3 of PFSense, which is the latest version as of this recording. And we're going to go to interfaces here, the interfaces menu. And as you can see here, there's only two interfaces here. There's LAN and WAN, no DMZ. So the third network card in this box is going to be used as the parent interface for our VLANs. So I'm going to click on assign under interfaces here. And as you can see, we have WAN and LAN. WAN is FXP0. LAN is FXP1, and then there's an FXP2 that's, uh, that's not, that doesn't have a, a network assigned, an interface assigned to it. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the VLAN tab. So I'm going to click on the VLAN tab here, and we're, I'm going to create... Oh, and another thing that should be mentioned here is that they recommend that your your tagging scheme for VLANs is... Uh, has some meaningfulness to this to to it, and so in this case, w w and one of the recommendations is that the third, the VLAN tag matches the third octet on your subnet. So I'm going to abide by that st standard here, and I'm going to create two VLANs. One of them is going to be 192.168.4.x, and the other one is going to be 192.168. Dot five dot x and the VLAN tags are going to correspond to that third octet. So let me just click on the plus button here on the to the right side of this empty table here. The table is empty because we haven't created any VLANs. The parent interface, as I mentioned before, is going to be FXP2. So I'm going to select that from the drop down box and we're going to select VLAN tag. VLAN tag is going to be four and we might as well give it a description. So I'm just going to call it DMZ. VLAN 1. And I'll click on save. And then we're going to do basically the same thing for the second VLAN. We click on the plus button here. And uh, differences, uh, we're going to select the FXP2 again. VLAN tag is going to be 5 this time. And I'm going to call it DMZ VLAN 2. And we'll click on save. And now we should have our two VLANs here. So we're gonna, next I'm going to go back to interface assignments. So I'm going to click on the interface assignments tab. And we're going to assign our, uh, our interfaces here. So now in the drop-down box, we should have our VLAN. So I'm going to click on the, the drop-down box here. And you can see we have VLAN 4 on FXP2, DMZ VLAN 1, and VLAN 5 on FXP2, DMZ VLAN 2. So I'm going to select the first VLAN. And I'm going to click on the plus button here to the right of the, that column. And we should have our first VLAN. Yes, we do. And it's assigned the name OPT1. And I'm going to select the second VLAN here. And I'm going to assign that, and I clicked on the plus button, and we should have our second, yes, we do, our second VLAN here. So we've done the assignment, but we haven't done the configuration yet, which we have to do. So to, to configure the first VLAN, I'm going to click on opt1 here in the interface column. And first, we need to click the, uh, we check the uh, enable interface checkbox. Description, I'm going to change it. Let's change it to something a little bit more meaningful called VLAN 1. Um, IPv4 configuration type will be static IPv4. And I'm going to assign an IPv4 address of 192.168.4.1. Uh, and uh, the subnet 
it, it has uh, 24 bits, so I select 24 here. Um, so, and I'm gonna leave the these boxes unchecked here. So I'm gonna click on save, and that should give us our first VLAN uh, setup here. And they, they want us to click on apply changes, so I'm gonna click on the apply changes button at the top here. And then when this is done, we still need to configure VLAN 2, or the second VLAN. So I'm going to go to Interfaces here again and click on Opt 2 here. And click on Opt 2. And again, I'm going to check the Enable Interface checkbox. I'm going to change the name of this to VLAN 2. Um, IPv4 configuration type again is going to be static IPv4. IPv4 address is going to be 192.168.5.1 and we'll, the subnet part is 24 bits leave these boxes unchecked and again click save and that should give us our second vlan and uh, that should be set up and we need to click apply changes again so i'll click that as well okay as of now uh, once this this page reloads, we'll have the uh, you know our two VLANs uh, configured, but we really haven't done anything with them yet. I mean they're there, and in fact we can click on a sign here and we can see that they're they're set they're set up here, but we really haven't done anything with it. And one of the things that we might want to do is set up the DHCP server uh, for for the uh, for these two VLAN uh, virtual LANs. So let's go to services and we'll go down to DHCP, DHCP server and click on DHCP server here. And you'll notice we have two new tabs here for VLAN 1 and VLAN 2. So I'm going to click on VLAN 1 first. And we're going to, I'm going to click on enable DHCP server on VLAN 1 interface. And you can see that we have an available range that runs from 192.168.4.1 to 254. Um, I'm going to set it up the way that I set up the LAN DHCP, which is I'm going to give it 100 uh, numbers, which should be more than enough. Um, so I'm going to start at 100 and run to 200. Um, I don't have any Win servers or DNS servers here. Uh, I don't have any static mappings for it, so I'm just going to click on Save. Um, so that'll give us our first DHCP uh, set up here, and then we want to do the other VLAN. So we're just going to go to VLAN two and do the same thing. Only you know instead of doing uh, dot you know one two dot one six eight dot four dot x, it's going to be one nine two dot one six eight dot five. Um, and so we'll just enter this. And again, I'm not going to change any of these. We, um, and I'll click on save. And that will give us our you know DHCP setup on the two VLANs. Um, and you can also go to firewall here and go to uh, click on rules. And you can also see now there's there's new tabs here for VLAN 1 and VLAN 2. So that's one of the reasons why you might want to have the uh, virtual LANs because um, because you can define um, separate new security policies for, for each of, of your virtual networks here. So that's one of the less uh, could be potentially a good reason for having them. Um, okay, well, I that's pretty much it for this video. Um, if you found this video helpful, you might consider visiting my website, pfsensetup.com, which has uh, more videos and um, tutorials and other information about the, uh, the P PFSense and the PFSense project. Um, and I'll see you on the next video.